in this video i'm going to show you how you can convert virtually any picture into a souvenir coin similar to this and if you stick to the end i'll show you more practical things you could do with this technique in your day-to-day -day life stay tuned this video would not be possible without the work of the nice people over at dragon raisin dragon raisin is a it's a company that provides um exotic um um 3d printing raisins um right now they they are the only manufacturers of um this of, of this class of metal shine fast kill raisins i'm using the brass version for this project with this met, with this um, fast kill metal shine raisin you get this um brass color you know right off the build plates and then you can weather it like i'll show you um in the video so yeah you can head off to dragonraising.com right now and get 15% off your off your purchase with uh, my coupon code HMN3D-15. In Blender, um, all the bits and pieces come together basically. Alright, so we'll click away from that. Then the next first step is to import the picture we just modified. Click on new, then open. Then go to wherever you stored your program, look at the picture, and open. Okay, now the next step is bringing a grid, hold down Shift and A, Shift A, go to grid. Yeah, now we have the grid. What I usually do is um, to, match the, the, to match the X and Y subdivisions with the size of the image. You notice the size of the image is um, 540 by 658 <coughs> pixels. So basically, every pixel gets a, a cell, basically, in that grid. All right. I know you can't see anything that happened here, but we'll see in a moment. And the next step is to change the dimensions of um, this grid to accommodate the size of coin that we want. Since we are doing a really small one, um, I usually start off with some random value. But the main thing is to maintain the scale of the image. So that's why I'm using the, the grid size still. 658. Scale them up by the same thing. Okay, these, just, these are just random figures. There's no particular reason why I use that. So you could use what you want. You observe the grid figure, the grid object, it's um, here now the next step is to displace it this is the main procedure here this wrench like icon click on it add modifier and displace yeah displace it by that texture that we have and voila modify uh, model the base of the coin in here and some other um card application uh, for simplicity I'm just going to import it as an STL file. So you see the object, um, the coin base is really simple. Just a cylinder with, um, with some some simple geometry. Okay, so I'm going to um, adjust this so it looks good. Um, first of all, we'll bring down this coin base. Now you notice we have two objects. Come on. Yeah, we have two objects in our workspace, the base of the coin and the, and the grid. So I don't know, this is Z. Uh-huh, minus 1.4. Alright, I know we are good. But you notice that the grid size is bigger than the base. So, um, we are going to have to shrink the base. Come back to grid, and um, I don't know. I usually shrink it down gradually since I'm not sure. Let's see, point eight. Do the same thing for the y-axis. Uh -huh. Okay. Still bigger than the um, portion allotted to it. So let's do that one more time. Okay. Okay. Uh, same thing for the y. Uh -huh. Okay, now it looks better. 
but um, it's clogging up some of our geometry here so I'm gonna have to shift the grid a bit right I should I'll move it in the y-axis by 0.6 let's see what happens oh quite good all right so that's it um, for simplicity sake I mean okay so we export it as an STL our next step we're gonna we're gonna um, begin printing the parts you observe I, I'm modeling it in three parts the, the top the, the bottom and then the ring um, that way it's, it's you get the best precision I'll explain later but to print this part um, I have to I have to use support otherwise because this is very thin it's going to fail if I don't use support so I'm going to come here I'm going to use heavy support and um, <coughs> yeah apply and uh yeah i lifted it up by eight uh, millimeters but still this is not enough i'm gonna i'm gonna put a support for every single section in a moment so in case you're new to shoot a box uh, it's really simple you just click wherever you desire support and computer does the rest for you okay so yeah that's basically it um then we come back here check our settings uh, yeah i'm gonna leave it at the default 0.5 the other thing is basically stock settings and um yeah we're good to go so we slice it up and um, save it, it's going to take 55 minutes yeah okay so that's it okay guys um so i just got the i just got the model of the build plate as you can see it came out quite fine um i'm going to remove the support now I'll put this in a tub of isopropyl alcohol. So, shake it a little bit and um, to remove all of the excess resin. After that is done, then put it into a clean into a cleaner um, container of some more isopropyl okay then you shake it up shake it up a little bit um, you could take this off after after curing them but I prefer to do it before because then um, the material is less brittle okay okay so we are at the, um, my DIY curing station um, basically it's just a it's just a basket as you can see um, with some aluminium foil and um, some 405 nanometer uv light you know that just goes around about it I, I i put a grid a transparent grid at the bottom and uh, the idea is to um saturate whatever is being cured um so that it's totally um, immersed in the uv light then finally cover it with um some more aluminum foil so just cover it up and yep plug it out in and that's it leave this here for about 30 minutes okay so our parts are ready now i've gotten it off the uv oven and um you can i just need to trim off some um, um there's some excess there's some ad adhesion layer at the bottom i'm just gonna cut that off quickly okay so you observe, um, I've placed the two pieces together. 
own end of um, this general side the other end the unique side <clears throat> the next step is to weather it you could get um some black weathering powder um for this i'm going to be using some um some um i'm actually using paint pigment this is just black paint pigment use a soft brush preferably so you don't scratch the surface of the of the project okay then just um dab it lightly uh, so after applying the the powder um i deliberately stained it like this so i just apply a little bit of soap um light just a little bit as little as possible and um, just smear it on the surface from the inside out from the inside out and then i just rinse that off quickly with water there you have it then you get that um it kind of makes the picture to pop okay what i usually do finally i take a hard brush and um any spots that has the, the spots are too dark i just brush that off uh, this is difficult to do with one hand but the idea is basically to you know reduce the you know where it's too dark give it more shine okay so um the paint has dried um i'm gonna apply some some matte lacquer um to the surface to you know preserve it a little bit okay so i i take the i use a soft brush take um some lacquer and apply it on the surface from the inside out like this from this center of the brush from the center to the exterior gradually yeah just to avoid um, any air, air gaps and um leave it for about 30 minutes to dry then turn it around and do the same thing so i'll be back when it's dry okay here is the finished work after uh let me zoom this in yeah and the unique side and the general side so just to recap in this video i showed how you could take um a picture and um convert that into a 3d relief and um weather it so that um it looks more um it looks more realistic and um this is just um a souvenir coin um but you could do more practical things with this for instance um i use the same resin to 3d print um my phone case like you see here and um you could apply the same concept to um, customize it a bit for instance um, here is a, the same picture i scaled it up did the same thing and um yeah so there you have um you have um, your customized phone pouch you have your own customized phone pouch so this is just um some something an example of something practical you could do with this technique um quite quite useful you observe that um you observe that the material is um The material is quite um it's it's tough and at the same time it's a bit flexible so it it does quite quite well um um for 3d printing um something practical like a phone pouch or thanks for watching guys um please hit that like button if this content is valuable to you um relevant links are in the description um you could check out my sister also if you want me to make something um unique for you um yeah it's november the holiday seasons are creeping up on us again um, usually i like to create some um unique souvenirs for friends and family members um i've explored um over the over the past few years coins keychains and um, and that phone pouch that i just showed 
um, but uh, let me know in the comments uh, what kind of um, souvenirs you would like customized um, um, either as a, as a gift item for yourself or for someone else um, it would be interesting to know these are just my own ideas let me also know what you think um, also I didn't include in this video the editing process for um, the photo for the picture that I used uh, this is because um, depending on the colors um, the light intensity the shadows and um, a few other things it could get a bit complicated and um, then this video will be too long <laughs> so um, I um, let me know in, 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 the, in the comments if you would like to see a separate video where I go into detail explaining all these um, nitty gritties and how to um, and how to overcome them um, with the editing process so uh, let me know in the comments um, yeah in the next um, for the next episode I plan to show in fine details how you know how I designed this and some more interesting things you could do for your phone pouch um, yeah subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that and ring ring that bell um, I'll see you in the next one thank you